Hi guys, this is Noel from creationeffects.com. Uh, I've had several people ask me how I made this ocean flyover shot. Uh, this is the opening shot in the demo video for Ocean, which is an After Effects template from creationeffects.com. So I decided to make a quick tutorial on how I did this. Uh, I'll be using the Ocean template, which makes an animation like this really easy to make. Uh, if you've never heard of it, Ocean basically takes a video clip of some water and it turns it into a huge 3D ocean or lake, which you can then customize and create 3D camera movements and create all kinds of cool water animations that you would probably think uh, just by looking at them would not be possible in After Effects. So I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out the ocean template and let's start with the tutorial. All right, so I have uh, the ocean template open right now. Um, by the way, this is not the main tutorial for the template. Uh, you can find the main tutorial at the link in the description. Um, this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how I made that shot. So uh, you can see we've got step one, step two, step three here in your project panel. Let's just go through the steps. I'll open this up and uh, we're going to make an HD animation. So I'll open the HD folder. And the first thing I want to do is is bring my background into After Effects and put it in this, in this comp here. So I'll go to File and Import and File. And I have this image that I got off the internet with some clouds. I'm going to use this as the background for my shot. So I'll bring that in and just drag it into this comp. And uh, we'll scale it down. I might move it over so the sun is more in the middle. And that's fine. We can customize the positioning later. I'll close that comp and next we want to put our water texture into this comp here. So uh, if you look here we've got a folder called water textures and inside we have over 50 different clips of ocean water or lake water, um, pools, ponds, rivers. Um, they're all divided up into their own categories. We're going to make an ocean so I'll open this ocean folder and you can see if I go through we've got a wide variety of different uh, colors of water, different levels of turbulence. I think this is the one uh, that I used for that opening shot. So I am going to drag that into this, into the put water texture here comp. I'll play that back so you can see what it looks like. These water textures average about 10 seconds in length and they all loop continuously. Let's close that comp and uh, we're done with this step. Next I'll go to step two and we can kind of rush through this one. This step just adds uh, a wavy pattern at the top of the water clip. And uh, if you select the control layer in this comp and then go to your effect controls panel, you've got a number of different slider controls which you can use to customize the shape of the waves. And the idea is to match the shape and the speed and the movement of this shape up here with the water in your water texture. So you can change the height of the wave and you can increase the detail. Um, you, can, you can make it move to the left or the right depending on where your water is moving. Um, I don't think we even need to do this. I think that maybe add a little more complexity and uh, I think our water is moving to the left. Let's do negative 40. That'll make the shape move to the left with the water. Good enough. We'll close that and moving on we'll go to step three and again we'll open the HD folder and open up this water main comp. So here we have our 3D ocean and uh, you can see the color doesn't really match. The water is pink so let's fix that really quick. I'll go back to my step one folder and open up that water texture comp and let's just add some quick color correction to that. We'll do a hue saturation effect and I'll adjust the master hue until we get more of that gold color. And that'll work. Let me just play this back so you can see what it looks like. Um, I'll make sure that my resolution is on half or less just so it's faster. So I think that looks really cool considering we just made that from a single 10 second clip of some water. Um, so what exactly is going on here? Let me use the, uh, the camera tool. I'll hit the C key 
until we get this orbit tool and I'll just move the camera up and I can orbit around and you'll start to see uh, we just have a bunch of instances of our water texture all in a row and they're rotated at an angle and we can extend the edges into the distance if we need to so you can almost get a 180 degree view of your ocean and you can animate your camera to move however you want um, you can put a title over the water uh, you can bring the camera way up and get a high angle shot uh, whatever you want to do it's really flexible I'm gonna undo that camera movement and uh, I'm gonna show you from the right side view let me zoom out you can see all of our water texture layers here uh, we've got 15 we're gonna need a lot more than that here we have our camera layer in the front it's looking forward you can see our background um, our cloud image here and if we want to recreate that flyover shot uh, what we need to do is animate this camera to move forward and in the beginning it's going to be tilted downward and then it's going to slowly tilt up and reveal the horizon and uh, we're going to need to duplicate these water layers so that uh, they go off really far into the distance so let's animate our camera first I'm going to select our camera layer and hit the P key to bring up the position property and uh, I'm going to just start moving my camera back if you hold down shift while you click and drag the value it'll go much faster I'm actually just going to enter in a nice round value negative 15,000 pixels and uh, I'll go to my first frame and I'll add a keyframe and I think 10 seconds is a good duration for our animation so I'll go forward 10 seconds and uh, I'll bring our camera to 15,000 pixels so it'll travel a total of 30,000 pixels and uh, you can see now the camera is actually facing backwards and that's because it's always going to point at the point of interest and uh, I'll fix that in a second first of all let's duplicate our water layers so you can see this little note says duplicate any blue layer to add water layers I'm gonna select all the blue layers I'll click I'll select the top one and then shift select the bottom and I'll do command D or control D to duplicate them while they're still selected I'll bring them to the bottom and I'm just gonna do that a bunch of times you can see I'm on layer number 100 here and I think I think that'll be enough we'll see and we'll also need to push these back on the z-axis as well so we can do that using the control layer I'm gonna select my control layer and then in the effect controls panel uh, you can see we've got a whole bunch of different slider controls for customizing our scene and the control that we need right now is found in the position section here uh, the Z position so we're gonna move that way back I'm not sure exactly how much if we go to the first frame I think we're gonna want it even further under the camera I'll try that and um, let me zoom out so we can see everything and I'll go to our last keyframe our camera is going to be looking the other way and we're gonna want these uh, water layers to keep going off into the distance so on the control layer uh, let's see we've got this increase Z position with distance so the further back these go in the distance the further apart they're gonna be and it's gonna add a lot of uh, depth and distance to these layers without having to duplicate the layers a bunch of time and make it slower so let's start cranking that up and see what happens and I'm not sure how far that is now but let's go with it and we might want to make some more adjustments to these later uh, but for now let's just finish animating our camera really quick um, remember we're gonna have this camera tilt down let's say for the first two seconds and then it'll start tilting up as it keeps moving forward 
So we need to bring this point of interest forward in our scene to make our camera tilt downward. So the shortcut to bring up the point of interest is A. I'm going to hit Shift A, and that'll let us keep our position property open and add this point of interest property. And uh, I'm holding down Shift as I drag the value so that it goes faster. Something like that should work. Actually, if you remember, our camera position is negative 15,000 pixels. Let's just make this negative 13,500. Um, so that's 1,500 pixels ahead of the camera. We'll want to remember that. Um, let's add a keyframe for the point of interest. And let's go forward two seconds. We want to keep that point of interest ahead of the camera, 1,500 pixels, to keep it tilted down the same amount for those first two seconds. Um, so our camera is now at negative 9,000. Let's make it negative 7,500. And uh, over the next, let's say, four seconds, it's going to tilt upward. So we're going to bring this way forward. And now would be a good time to go back to our active camera view because um, I'm not sure what this looks like. Uh, so let's go to active camera view. You can see our background layer got pushed way back in Z space. Um, so it looks much smaller and we can fix that in a minute. And also we've got some stripes on our water. Uh, we can fix that as well. But for now, uh, let's finish animating our point of interest. I would say we should keep our horizon at about the middle of the frame. Um, so what we can do is bring our point of interest up a little bit. And that's about right. And uh, I'm going to round this number off just to make the math easier. Okay, so, uh, so right now the point of interest is 12,000 pixels ahead of the position of the camera. Um, and we want to keep that distance for the remainder of our animation. So I'll go to the end of our animation and I'll enter in another value for our point of interest. It should be 12,000 pixels ahead of this. So that would be 28,000 pixels. And I think that's pretty good. If we wanted to add more water layers, we certainly could do that, and this would go even further into the distance. And before we fix how this looks, um, I'm going to need to make some small adjustments to our keyframes, because I know this is going to look like garbage. Uh, we need to smooth out the keyframes so our camera motion isn't all jerky. Um, and I always do that in the graph editor. Our position keyframes can remain linear. So the position will change at a constant pace, and that's, uh, that's what we want. But this, this point of interest, uh, um, as the camera tilts up, we want it to ease into that motion. So what we can do uh, is select those keyframes and right click it and uh, we're not going to go to easy ease I find nine times out of ten that's not what I want we're going to go to keyframe interpolation and in temporal inter interpolation we're going to choose continuous bezier and now I'll, I'll click on the graph editor button here if you're not familiar with the graph editor um, I'm not going to say it's simple. It takes some practice to master it. But basically, this curve represents the speed that the value changes. If it's a flat line, that means the value isn't changing. If it's a steep slope, that means the value is changing more rapidly. Um, remember, for that first two seconds, we don't want that value to change. So I'm going to try and straighten this out. Actually, I'm going to right-click those and just change those ones to linear. Okay, and I'll bring this down here. And uh, I can go drag this little handle to make that transition smoother. Okay, we've got a straight line for that last four seconds of the animation. And uh, we'll ease... We'll ease out of this one and ease into this one. 
and that'll just smooth that movement out as the camera tilts up. And wow, I really hope that looks okay. Uh, that's not at all what I did in my practice run, but hopefully it'll work. Okay, now we can, uh, we'll close that and we'll go to our control layer and we'll try to fix some of those things we saw earlier. If I scrub through, you can kind of get a feel for how this is going to look. All right, let's, uh, let's do the background first. Um, on the control layer, the very last section of controls is called background controls. Um, we can scale that background way up. You can see I, I went to the frame where I'm furthest from the background. But I, can, but I can still see it. So as long as it fills our frame at this frame, um, it'll look okay for the rest of the animation as well. Uh, oh, I stretched it. Okay, we want it to be the same for both X and Y. And uh, let's go forward a little bit. And uh, that's fine. If we wanted to bring it down, we could. And next, let's fix these stripes. Uh, as the water texture repeats itself over and over into the distance, you start to see patterns um, because every texture is going to have something recognizable about it. Either one side will be a little darker than the other, or uh, there's going to be a reflection that's going to repeat itself. Um, but it's easy to fix that. If we go to the, uh, the top up here, Add Random Exposition, we can start cranking that way up and you can see the layers um, are randomly being pushed out. So I added about 2000 pixels of random position on the X axis and uh, that gets rid of all of those stripes. If we didn't like how it turned out, we can just add a number to the random seed here and it'll give you new random position results. So you can play with that to eliminate any patterns that might appear in the water texture. Now I don't think we're seeing the edges of any of these layers, but if you did see the edges you could uh, extend them uh, using the CC Repetile effect which you can control with these controls here. Um, and one other thing I might check out, we have this uh, section called Horizon Controls. Um, the Horizon I've scrolled down to the very bottom and uh, that's this layer here. If I isolate that, you can see it's just one of our water texture layers. Um, it does not extend all the way to the edge of the frame. This horizon layer is just like the other water layers except it's even further back in the distance and it doesn't have that wavy shape at the top. It's just straight. So it's it's meant to serve as your horizon. And it has this, this separate section of controls because you might want to position it differently uh, than these other water layers. So you'll usually want to uh, solo that layer and check out uh, where it is. Sometimes it can be down here. Sometimes the edges won't go to the edge. Um, and then you can ad make your adjustments uh, to fix that in this section here. I'll just extend the edges. And one last thing I might do uh, is just turn on motion blur. We'll turn it on for the comp and then I'm going to select all my water layers and turn on motion blur for those layers. And I, I hit command K to bring up the composition settings and uh, I'm going to increase the shutter angle to like 300 and that'll increase the blur. So that about does it. I hope you liked that tutorial. Uh, be sure to go to Creation Effects and check out the other effects that are there for After Effects. There's custom flocks of birds, swarms of insects, schools of fish, custom 3D particle effects, 3D books, ink bleeds, auroras, VHS effects, old film effects, glitch effects, text effects, growing flourishes, and over 40 artifacts for converting your footage into animated artwork.